everyone, today in this video, I'm gonna be checking out the Hikins Robot Vacuum Cleaner. I did receive this sample from Hikins directly, but any opinion expressed in this video is strictly my own. That being said, if you're interested in this product or you wanna find out more about it, the link to it will be in the video description. Here's a look at the retail box and packaging. Everything looks great. They walk you through the contents on the backside. This does come with a remote control. Now let's go ahead, let's open it up and look at those contents. Here are all the contents. First up, we have our user guide and manual. This walks us through everything we need to know about about our new vacuum from how to set it up to use it all the different control and charging settings you'll also notice we have our cleaning and maintaining section and at the end we have our tech specs for the vacuum next you'll see we have our multi-purpose tool and cleaning brush we have four side brushes so two will install on it and then two will be for future use here's our remote control to control the vacuum it will take two AAA batteries that you'll notice are included right here we have our wall power supply and charger with indicator light here's the two charging contacts there's the side to connect the power supply you can see the very bottom of it here with two nice grip feet Moving right along, we have the robot vacuum cleaner itself. Let's look at this in more detail. Here's a look at the top of the vacuum. You'll see their logo and branding here, power button front and center. We can lift up the cover to reveal the on and off switch as well as our dustbin with cleaning instructions. So the dustbin pulls right out here. You'll see the filter that it has. It's very small and compact. We can also then unclip it from the side to easily pull this out to clean as needed and to empty the contents of the dust bin. That just snaps right back in place. You'll see the inside of the vacuum with the dust bin removed. Then it just drops right back in and you can shut the cover. Here's a look at the back side with some exhaust there. Looks like we have a direct connect for charging as well too. Here's our navigational bumper and sensors on the front. You'll see the play on the side there. And now let's flip it over to the very bottom. You'll see spring-loaded drive wheels. We have our cliff sensors, charging contacts, omnidirectional wheel, additional product specs there. Let's go ahead, let's snap on the side cleaning brushes. They are labeled left and right. L to L, R to R. Just line it up, gently press in place. And there is the vacuum all set up and ready to go. It'll start to sweep the contents in and suck them up right here. You'll notice too that we don't have any sort of brush roller. It's just straight sweep and suction with this particular model. Now let's go ahead and try it out. we just finished our first clean let's take a look at the results here so we'll open up the vacuum we'll take a peek inside the dust bin first thing you'll notice is our filter right there and it is discolored so we did pick up some fine dust and dirt particles in there that's a good sign to see and you'll see from the other side we have a lot of contents in there a lot of pet hair a lot of grass clippings crumbs little pieces of sticks and debris. Let's see if we can gently open this without making a huge mess. There's a look. That filter is also discolored. I see some really fine dirt and dust particles trapped in there. And if we pull this out, you'll see all of our contents that we sucked up right there in the bin. Let's take a peek inside 
no tangles or anything right there. There's no main brush roller. And now let's flip it over. Whoa, you'll see here though, both of our side brushes got severely tangled. I mean, look at that. So it trapped a lot of human hair and it had a hard time. We can try to untangle it here. That's a pretty big wad of hair. And then it, you know, deformed the side cleaning brushes. So if you are gonna be using this on carpet, most of that came from carpet, that's gonna be something you'll want to consider. If you wanna use the side cleaning brushes, but really unusual, I've never seen that before, using vacuums, that they would do that. So I'm gonna think it has something to do with how these are designed, maybe a little bit too flimsy. We even have hairs tangled up there. But typically with this design, what's nice is you don't get that hair tangled here because we don't actually have that physical brush roller. But it's unfortunate that in this case, that's kind of um, at the back burner due to the fact that all of these got so tangled with hair just after one clean. Now let's talk about this vacuum's performance. So we'll be comparing this vacuum to over 30 vacuums that we've personally tested here in our studio and we'll see how it stacks up against the competition. So first thing you'll see is our max suction power. This is measured in PAs. This vacuum has 1800 PAs of suction, but you'll see that's less than half the average of 3620 PAs. Moving right along, very similar results here with our max CFM. Higher the better, usually the more powerful, will clean better usually not always but that's typically the case and it's a good leading indicator 4.8 cfms here versus 7.2 then our deep cleaning score pretty indicative of the previous metrics we just looked at 60 percent was our score for this vacuum versus 85 as tested but i do want to point out with this particular vacuum why it doesn't perform very good in our deep cleaning test is because it, it doesn't actually have a brush roller to agitate, flick up and help it suck up all of the contents in our test. This is just straight suction right over it. So if we actually look at it from the perspective of other similar models, this is dead even in the average, which is 60. So lowest 55, highest is 65. This one falls right in the middle at 60%. So within its own product category, great, right? It's going to be average, but overall compared to high and low end vacuums, it's definitely below. Next, we have our decibel test. This vacuum came in at 70 decibels for our max readout versus 68 for our average, but that's well within the average. You won't be able to tell if your vacuum 68 or 70, it won't make any sort of noticeable difference. Now we're looking at battery life measured in minutes, 100 minutes of battery life for this vacuum versus 141 on average. Battery capacity is next. That's measured in milliamp hours. Based off our previous metric, this isn't a surprise. 2,000 milliamp hour battery versus almost double, close to double the amount at 3,574 milliamp hours for the average across all our vacuums. Now, in regards to height, this is one of the lowest profile vacuums out there. It's great when it comes in under three inches. If you have some of those hard to reach areas, furniture, maybe that your traditional vacuum or one with lighter navigation can't go under, this vacuum might be able to squeeze right in where you want it to go. 2.95 inches versus the average of 3.6. That average skews higher for the models that have LiDAR navigation up at the top. Now let's talk about bin capacity. This is measured in milliliters. I'm guessing it's around 300 milliliters. I gotta tell you, this is one of the smallest bins I've seen in a RoboVac, so definitely below average. And that does make a difference for this particular vacuum because you don't have the self-empty base option. So that means you're making more trips back to the vacuum to empty it throughout your clean. Lastly, let's talk about cost. This will help you have a lens to see all the data that we just talked about through a new and fresh perspective. This is going to be less than half the cost of the average vacuum that we've tested. So that helps explain the gap in performance because you're not paying that much either. So you get half the performance, but you're paying half the cost. So now let me show you through my final thoughts after using this RoboVac. It's exactly what I was expecting for a vacuum at this price point. You get what you pay for. These vacuums are all a dime a dozen in my opinion. So buy whatever one is the most affordable at the time that you're checking out. But this one, just like the others, has two side cleaning brushes, no main brush roller, and it's just basically a motorized dustbin that works best on hard floors and surfaces. 
don't really recommend it for carpets and rugs, especially this particular model. I don't know if it's the side cleaning brushes are too thin, too long, not stiff enough, but those got severely tangled and wrapped around. I haven't seen that before in a vacuum. So that was really unusual and quite concerning to me. But in regards to the overall design, how it runs, the dustbin, everything like that, definitely on par with the competition at this price. They're all very, very similar.